That's how old I am. By the way, how cute is my iPod station? It's an iPad. How cool is that? Right. Hi, I'm Oliver and welcome to today's discussion. So today is not a critique or a review of a book, but rather an experience that I have as a reader, which apparently is shared by many readers. Um, like this video is inspired obviously by the great Raylene, Raylene from, um, I never know if it's Raylene or Raylene, I'm sorry, from Pet Food and Frogs 07, who did uh, two videos like uh, called uh, Books and Songs. I was basically talking about the association between books and music. And I also had a, well, also Andrea Heckler from uh, Books and Brew, yeah, Books and Brew, uh, did a video about unusual tip for writing. And she was talking about, not the importance, but how a lot of writers, and I would say also readers, have about, you know, having the, the, the best music for writing or for reading. And, you know, I was leave you know, we, talked a little bit in the comments about how we like to have the perfect music for when we're reading and that's what I want to talk about it here so it's not tips or anything it really is just personal experience of books that are strongly associated with certain soundtrack or a like the soundtrack of like what do I listen to when I read those books now like I found two types of books so the first part, or the first few books I'm going to talk about, are books that I have strongly associated with with a certain album or a certain song unwillingly. So it was basically probably, oh, I've just purchased a CD, let me put it in my CD player. You know, kids, like I was so cool when I was a teenager. I mean, I had a CD player that could, like, that, that contained three discs mind blown and um so you know so they're now associated forever with this book but it's it was not willingly chosen it just happened like that i don't have the books here but i have like two like there's two stephen king novels that are so strongly associated with certain sounds uh i remember when i read uh the stand which I think to this day is still the longest book I've ever read. Like it was a single novel and in French it was 1183 pages. I remember. I remember. Um, and I was listening a lot to Melanie C's Northern Star which was her first al solo album. And Cher's Belief I just came out. And I know that like on this album like there's a song called Gaga. And on here there's a song called... Um, all or nothing and strong enough and I mean I mean this I don't know I listened to all or nothing and I remember them being on the road driving like trying to get to the cornfield and like this is associated a lot with the cornfield it's con cornfield itself like I also have a strong association when I was reading the book it once again by Stephen King and it was I think 1120 pages in French and it was in hardcover. It was heavier than the stand. The, hem the stand was a paperback. I uh, borrowed them from the, from the library, from the, yeah, from the library. Um, and I was listening to a lot to a uh, supposed former infatuation junkie by Alanis Morissette and the two first track on the Spirit Feel album. And the two first track on the Globe Sessions by Sheryl Crow, what were they called? My Favorite Mistake and There Goes Their Neighborhood. I mean, I remember certain imagery. I think like this spirit feel is mostly associated from when they were going down into the tunnels, to the sewage tunnel towards the end, going to confront it. It was supposed to form infatuation junkie. Like, um, oh my god, what's the track? Uh, oh yeah. Cannot. I mean, it's associated with, um, 
I had this imagery like they're in the junkyard towards the middle of the novel and then they open an empty fridge and there's stuff written in blood I don't remember what's written in it there were butterflies that came out and there was an electric storm I have this very strong vision about it and when I read the Mars trilogy I was listening to uh, Daniel Belanger's album which had just come out at the time uh, it's called L'Echec du Matériel and I mean those were three gigantic novel I must have listened to more than one album but if I had just because back in the day I had a CD player so it was one CD that I would just listen on a loop like on public transportation and because that's when I would read also mainly and I remember like I thought the, the mood fit greatly the books and there's a song in particular what's it called amusement or amusement it's a song without uh, lyrics and I'm gonna leave a description somewhere you can go listen to it. No worry, no lyrics in French. So if you don't speak French, you can still understand it. And I have this strong imagery. Out of all of the tons of imagery that the no the those novels provided, that song is strongly associated with when they were coming onto Mars and how Mars was getting bigger and bigger and bigger as they were approaching it, and all the stars around it. It's associated with that. And then there's also in recent years, well, not recent years, in recent times, I've always tried to associate a great album or a great set list of songs to accompany a book. I mean, it's just like wine. I mean, you want your bordeaux with your steak and then your chardonnay with your chicken breast. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's just like that. Like, either to... Because sometimes it can greatly enhance the experience. I mean, when I decided to read Blood Red Road, I, I knew that the character was sort of feisty and that it was not full of rage but like some anger or survival instinct or like a strong will or something. And so I decided to listen to My December by Kelly Clarkson. And it really did fit. I mean, there's sort of, a, there really is like a a rage or like anger into this that is also apparent to the character of Saba in this so it fit perfectly. When I so I decided to read Fun Home by Alison Bechdel and this is a graphic novel that's an uh, autobiography and it's about um, her childhood and her teenagehood a lot so I was like why not listen to the songs that I was listening to as a child or a teenager. So I saw where I sort of more used the song to put me back into the mood of how I was as a child or when I was younger. As a so it really did not fit because we did not grow up in the same era. But I think it put me back into the mood of being younger. So you know, pop music was huge back then. So I was listening to All Saints here and I was listening to Atomic Kitten, not ashamed. And I was listening to the Backstreet Boys and I was listening to the Spice Girls. You know, just good old pop music. When I decided to read 2312 by Kim Stanley Robinson, I really did not know what type of music I would read. So I would just listen randomly to, I mean, even to this day, sometimes I read a book and I don't, you know, particularly associate music with it. I just go with it. But this novel is so big that it came a point where I was immersed in the story and I knew that I still had a long way to go. So I was like, okay, how can I enhance the experience? And you know, I tried a couple of things, you know, some soundtrack, some album, and nothing would fit really. And one of the characters in the book loves classical music and he always whistles the melody of classical music. So I was like, why not listen to some classical music? So I was listening to, you can download it, it's free, it's over here, it's, it's the WQXR app, you can download, it's the uh, New York uh, City uh, classical music radio station. I discovered it because you know on iTunes you can go on radio and there's all genres of music and that's where I discovered it. So it was great, like it, I felt like it was a little bit more like that character. So it's cool. Now I read Susan Collins' The Hunger Games uh, after the trailer for the first movie came out. 
I hadn't really paid attention to the novel or the movie. Then I saw the trailer and I was really entranced by it. I was like, wow, this looks great. And if I think that by that point, either the song was out or it had been announced. That I don't remember. But I knew that the, song, the um, title song would be performed by Taylor Swift and the Civil Wars. So it's like, okay, there's going to be a country flavor to it. So it's like, I'm going to listen to some country music. So I decided to listen to some Kelly Pickler's album. And, but mostly, but mostly I was listening to her latest rec record, which is called A Hundred Proof. You know, it's a lot more, as opposed to her other album, which was almost like country, pop country. This is like traditional country. And it's great and it's fun and it's melodic. And I thought that also fit the... Mood well since the vo the novel is told as the uh it's a first person account told through a voice of a young woman. I thought that listening to a woman's singing would be fitting. And then there was one song in particular that's called Tough. That was the first single off of that record. And I know, I mean she talks a little bit about a boy in it, and she talks a little bit about how Jesus blah blah blah. But still, I mean listen to this. It says. That um, I wanted to be a princess like the other girl, but life came hard to my front door and I grew up trying to even out the score. Y yes, Katniss, you did. And then, tough, I ain't never been nothing but tough. All my edges have always been rough. Yes, there have been, and you are tough. Um, backbone, there, are no there ain't nothing wrong with a woman that got a little backbone. No, there ain't. That's what got you through it. Um... You want a shy little thing, a pretty little high heel thing. Gonna cry if I don't polish up. Well, that might be what the capital wants you to be. But we all know that this is not what you are. And then, I mean, they especially want you to be like that during the Victor's tour. And then, but she says, the way I see it, the hand of fate did me a favor with the cards he dealt my way. Well, yes, because had you not had such a tough upbringing, you would not be as tough as you are today, and you would not have been able to go through the Hunger Games, haha. -ha. And then, found out real fast, life is a game, a Hunger Games. Uh, if you're, uh, you're out real quick, if you don't know how to play, yes, you'll literally die. So, I mean, I thought that the lyrics, and that's one of the very, that's the only instances I could find where actually, like, the lyrics, I, I chose or I enjoyed that song paired with a, that story because of the lyrics of the song. That's the only one I could think of. So, yeah, I kid you not. Go check the Tough video by Killy Pickler. Listen to the song. Listen to the vibe of the song. And tell me that this is not Katniss Everdeen. Come on. Come on. So, do you have songs like that that are associated forever and ever to... A particular story. I mean, I could not listen to any of the albums that I told you about while reading another story. I could not because they're 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 already called for. So leave those in the comments below. If you make a video response, don't forget to le link it as well. I'm always open to suggestions about what you guys think I should read, so you can leave them here. You can also follow me on. Twitter or like my page on Facebook. That way also you can be updated about what I'm reading at the moment before I actually make a video out of it. And don't forget to subscribe or like the video if you liked it. And until next time, take care. Bye.